Good morning, South Point family. We're so excited you joined us today. We hope that you had an awesome Christmas and are looking forward to an exciting new year. Just a couple things before we get started. If you'd like to connect with us, download our app from the App Store or Google Play. South Point is an irrationally generous church, and your tithes and offerings is what makes that possible. Giving online is easy. Just go to www.southpoint.tv and click Give or Give through the app. Be sure that your giving is up to date by the end of the year if you want to claim it on this year's taxes. Join us back in-house or online next Sunday for our brand new series, Celebrate. Now, gather all your loved ones and get ready for worship, followed by an amazing message from Pastor Craig Wendell. January 2nd is literally just around the corner. If you didn't know, it is the first Sunday of the new year, and we're gonna be gathering together on that Sunday. And listen, that is the day that we start our fast. As you know, South Point, we've always started the year out with a fast, and we are starting that that Sunday. And if you don't know a lot about fasting, that is totally cool. Don't worry about it, but just do this. Come to church that Sunday, come to South Point, and we're gonna talk about fasting. I'm gonna explain it, lay it out for you, and then together as a corporate family, we're gonna move forward to fast for seven days together. So, go ahead and just prepare your heart. You might be saying, well, what do I have to do now? Just prepare your heart, get ready to learn something, get ready to grow a little bit, because as we fast, what we're doing is we're voluntarily laying aside food so that we can, our spirit man can just wake up a little bit more and we can be a little bit more aware of the spiritual surroundings. So I look forward to joining you January 2nd, Sunday, as we start our fast together. Love y'all. Your love is like radiant diamonds bursting inside us. We cannot contain your love will surely come find us like blazing wildfires singing God of mercy, sweet love of mine, I have surrendered to your design. May this offering stretch across the skies, these hallelujahs. 
across the earth, send the shadows to fly. Light of the world, from the beginning, the tragedies of time were no match for your love. From great heights of glory, you saw my story.
grace shine upon you be gracious to you lord turn his face toward you and give you peace children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children is present go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning Christmas is over. It's done. 
Rudolph's nose has burned out. Frosty the snowman has melted. Santa flew to Florida. And Jesus has outgrown the manger. It's amazing how you can do all this build up for Christmas. Like we've enjoyed the last month, basically, of all this build up for Christmas. Gifts and decorations and people screaming at the top of their lungs. Peace on earth, goodwill to man, you know, I mean, all that stuff. And then like that, like that, poof. It's gone, and now we're automatically dealing with work and bills and stress and annoying people on Goodman Road and everywhere else we drive, you know. And, and cashiers used to say Merry Christmas, and now they just look at you and say, Next, right? I mean, it's just like completely shifted gears like that. And that's how Christmas is every year, and it's actually that's how it is or was in the Bible as well. Well, okay, not in all the stories. So, in Luke, the Gospel of Luke, where we normally pull the Gospel story from, in fact, Luke, I read the Gospel story to our Mother's Day Out kids um, last week, and used Luke because Luke gives all the, all the fanfare, all the lead-ups. You know, you have the, um, let's see if I can get this straight, the angelic visitations to Mary and Joseph. You know, you're going to have this baby. And then you had the angels visit the shepherds, and then the shepherds go and, and visit baby Jesus, and Luke talks about being swaddled in clothes, whatever swaddling is in a manger, whatever. Anyway, all that build-up stuff and all of that, and so we use Luke because it's all the stuff that builds up to Christmas, but the, uh, the, the different story is the guy named Matthew. Matthew did a, a gospel, right? Matthew, it's the first one in the New Testament, and he tells a different story. Okay, well, not a different story. Like way back when that news reporter, Paul Harvey was the guy that he would always say, and the rest of the story is. And so that's, that's Matthew. You know, Matthew gives us the rest of the story. Look, look at what he says in Matthew chapter 1, verse 25. This is the last verse in chapter 1 and the last part of the last verse of chapter 1. He says this, but he, and the he is Joseph, but Joseph did not have sexual relations with Mary until her son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. That's it. That's like, that's all he shares about the birth of Jesus. But Matthew shares the rest of the story. He talks about what happens after Christmas. Um, all, Luke does the build up to Christmas and Christmas. And then Matthew's like, okay, here's what really happened. And Matthew talks about where the wise men came and he, they came to see Jesus about 40 days after he was born and stuff. And everybody knows that the wise men brought him gifts, right? They brought Jesus. What did he bring him? Everybody knows. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and you always have to say it in that order. Nobody ever says it backwards, except for Jonathan, I think. But anyway, um, so gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and he brought the, they brought these kingly gifts. Now, the wise men were looking for Jesus, and they stopped by Herod's place, King Herod. And Herod um, had a history of doing horrible things. He was just one of those guys, history tells us, that Herod would actually kill anybody that tried to take his throne or was even in line for his throne, okay? And so the wise men show up and they're like, hey, we're looking for the new king. So Herod gets a little, a little ticked off and a little sideways. Um, but look at Matthew 2, 16. This is what Herod does. The wise men go and they find Jesus. They give him the gifts. And then they don't go back to Herod. The wise, the wise men, they just leave. And so Herod gets mad and Matthew shares this. Herod was furious when he realized that the wise men had outwitted him. He sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under based on the wise men's report of the star's first appearance. Now that is absolutely horrible. And that's never part of the Christmas story. It is, it's after the Christmas story. But it's just, it's just horrible and it's shocking, but it's not shocking in the sense of if you know Herod's personality. Herod was responsible, and history just quotes that he killed his own mother because she had an heir to the throne, you know. He killed his own wife um, while she was pregnant with one of his kids. Herod was just that horrible, he, he was horrible, okay. And so it wasn't shocking to the people then, but you have to understand, this is what's going on during this time period. And so here, here's the good news. Before Herod sent out the death squad, God sent the provision. So before, like God knew that Mary and Joseph were going to have to escape to Egypt because he told them, I need you to escape to Egypt because Herod's going to kill the, all these kids. 
And so God provided for their travel and gave them enough money in that gold, frankincense, and myrrh to live in Egypt for four years. So just think about that for a second. He knew it was coming, and isn't it cool that God provides before it's ever even needed? And sometimes we might miss that, but here we, we don't miss that. We see that. And so they had enough for four years. Okay, that's all great. Okay, I, I hear you, especially Katie. She's back there like, what's the point, Craig? What, what are you trying to say? Okay, so here, here's what I want to I wanna share with us just real quick. I feel like every year after Christmas, you almost have to do a a re-entry process back into the normal world. You know, you get all this buildup of Christmas and letdown of gifts or excitement about gifts or family or whatever, you know. And then it's almost like, at least for me, it takes a couple days to get, get back into real life. Like what's after Christmas? And I feel like the, Matthew shows us some re-entry stepping stones, if you will. So let, let's look at this. Just you got to remember all the story I just told you that Matthew shared, okay? And then here's some stepping stones that I think we can re-enter real life again after Christmas. And here's the first one. Enjoy the party. Enjoy the party. Now, Mary and Joseph, they enjoyed the party, right? They enjoyed the birth. They enjoyed the visits of the, the shepherds and all this stuff. And um, the Bible says that Mary treasured these things in her heart. So they enjoyed the party. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I know yesterday was Christmas. And so you're all like, the party's over. Okay. Um, but if you missed the party, like if you treated it improperly, let me just let you know. South Point, we're getting ready to have a serious party, y'all. Come January, which is just like Oh, what, a week away next Sunday? We are celebrating 15 years of being old. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And 15 years old for a church is a party to be celebrated all month. So we're going to celebrate all month. So if you missed the party of Christmas, look forward to January. And here's the advice I want to give you. You need to know that I know that when there's celebrations, when there's holidays, when there's parties... A lot of times the things that we're grieving, the people that we're grieving, the, the people that we've lost, whether it be parents or, or kids or a sibling or just a friend, that we struggle. And those things seem to come to the surface during a celebration. And we miss the celebration. So here's what I want to say. Ecclesiastes says that there's a season for everything. Okay, And so there is a season to grieve. But there's also a season to celebrate. And don't confuse the two. So when it's time to celebrate, whatever it takes, do your best to just kind of lay that grieving aside for a day or two. You will be amazed at how much the joy of a celebration adds life back to you. Yeah. Okay, so, so lean into that party at the right times. Okay, enough with the parties because that was yesterday and now we're moving to January. So here's the second thing. Here's the second stepping stone. You will always have Herods. You will always have Herods in your life. Coming into this new year, uh, you will have people in your life that try to destroy you, your friends, your, your world. We all have Herods in our life. And here's, here's the deal. Don't question whether they, you will have them or not. I'm telling you, you will have them. I guarantee it. So the question is not, how can I stay away from them? Girlfriend, you ain't going to stay away from them. They're going to be in you. The real question is, what do you do with them? How do you deal with them? Okay. So Titus 3.10 um, give, this is just one. There's so many verses in the Bible about toxic relationships. I mean, there's tons. But Titus 3.10 says this. After a first and second warning, have nothing more to do with a divisive person who refuses to be corrected. Okay? So it, here's some advice. Uh, <laughs> the Bible's telling us two, a couple things. Number one, when you have someone in your life that is divisive, whether it be a gossiper or a... Because we all have, let's be honest, we all have the haters, betrayers, backbiters, and manipulators, right? And so what, what do you do with those? Here's the first thing. You have to confront them, right? The only way you, they decline it once or twice is if you've actually confronted them. And a lot of times people are just passive aggressive, and it just it doesn't work. You to, you're tolerating a miserable life, yeah. and, and don't, don't tolerate it. Confront in a nice way. And then once or twice, if they, don't, if they don't handle it, then what does it say? It says, cut ties. Like, don't just keep trying. If they're not going to receive correction, then move on. Again, don't live the next year. Don't live 2022 tolerating broken, horrible relationships. Just don't. You know I mean? Just your life will be better if you just go ahead and follow Titus 3.10. Okay? So the first one, 
enjoy the party, right? I mean, enjoy the party. Second one, you're going to have Herods in your life. Trust me, they're coming. If you don't already have them, they'll be coming. You, you're going to have them. Even you, Maddie, you'll have them. You'll have them. All right, here, here's the third one. Um, here's the third stepping stone as we re-enter normal life. God gives the provision. God gives the provision. Just like he provided that gold, frankincense, and myrrh for them to, to, for them to live for four years in Egypt. That's pretty astounding. Here's the cool thing. Um, this year, you will have probably more spiritual battles than you've ever had before. Just kind of feel like it's going to be one of those years. And that, I know that does not sound encouraging. The looks on your faces are all like, this message stinks. Let's go to <laughs> something else. You're probably going to have more spiritual battles this year than any other year. But here's the beautiful thing. God's already provided. And, and here's, here's what I mean by that. Um, Isaiah 54, 17 says this. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. The enemy right now is already making weapons that fit the chink in your armor. He's already making them. But just because he's forming the weapons, it don't mean squat because no weapon formed against you, you will have battles, you will have weapons formed against you and your families and your friends, but he's already provided, there's already been a provision to say that those weapons that were formed will not prosper. I don't know about you, but to me that's really, really good news. So when you're in the battle, let me give you some advice. You can remember this. It's being recorded so you can watch it in, Jan in July. How about that? Here's what you do. Keep walking. Just keep walking. Are there going to be days that stink? Yeah, there are. But God's already provided a way out. He's already provi provided and given provision for you to be successful and to come out on top. So just keep walking. One of my favorite Latin phrases is Salvatore Ambulando. It's written on the wall in my office. And it, it just, it means this. It means it's solved by walking. It's solved by walking. I think sometimes we quit too soon. We give up too early and we get depressed way before we should. Just keep walking. What do I, what do I have to do, Pastor? Just put one foot in front of you. That's all you have to do. One more step. Just don't. Don't give in to the fear of the, of the immediate, of the now. I mean, think about it. Do you not think Mary and Joseph were terrified when they have this newborn baby and now Herod is sending out this literal death squad killing all these? I mean, sure, they had a vision and an angel, a dream saying, hey, go do, you know, do this. But let's be honest. How many of you, even with a dream from the Lord, you wouldn't just be like, oh, everything's fine. No, you wouldn't. You'd be wetting yourself and freaking out. And Mary and Joseph did not... I'm, I'm just guessing that they were absolutely terrified. But what did they do? They walked. They, they kept going forward. They trusted that the Lord had provided for them, and they just kept walking. So just keep walking. Don't let the fear of the immediate destroy the destiny that God's put in front of you. Jesus had a destiny, right? I mean, obviously, obviously. And we do too. And I think sometimes we allow our destinies to be destroyed because to the fear of the moment the fear of the moment. So let's, let's get past that. All right, so here's the fourth one. Last one, y'all ready? Yeah. Let, can we recap all of them? You don't have to. I'll do it. Um, the first one is in, enjoy the party, yeah, right? Enjoy. And then the second one is, does anybody remember? You're, you're going to have Herod's in your, good job, Carson. You're going to have Herod's in your life. And then that third one, God, no weapon formed against you. God will provide. He's already provided. He is the provider. And then here's the fourth one. God never forgets you in Egypt. He never forgets you in Egypt. Now, if you forget everything else I said, this, that's what preachers say, right? If you forget everything else I said, you need to remember this one thing, Valerie, this one thing. This is the one thing. This is the one thing. God never forgets you in Egypt. Check this verse out. Matthew chapter 2, verse 19. You guys remember the story where we are, right? The death squad, Mary and Joseph take baby Jesus to Egypt. They're in Egypt for four years. You're probably wondering how I know that. Because history tells us when the census was that was taken from Bethlehem when Jesus was born all the way to history records when Herod died, which is where we are, and it's four years, okay, so roughly four years. So they're in Egypt for four years, and then this happens, Matthew 2, 19. After Herod died, okay, so that gives us a historical account. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared again 
to Joseph in a dream while he was still in Egypt, saying, Go back to the land of Israel and take the child and his mother with you, for those who sought to kill the child are dead. Now, when you look at symbolism in the Bible, the Egypt symbolizes some stuff, okay? So Egypt symbolizes a place of refuge in times of famine or threat turns into a place of slavery if you stay. So I'm gonna let that sink in for just a second, okay? So Egypt symbolizes a place that you can run to for refuge in the time of being threatened or in the time of just famine, you know, and you can see Bible stories where this all interlays. But if you stay too long, the thing that was a refuge turns into slavery. And so... Egypt, God, I'm sure God will send you. If he's not already sent you there, he's sending you there. He will send you to Egypt for times of rest. We all need times of rest. We all need a place of refuge, every single one of them, every single one of us. And Joseph and Mary, now think about this. Joseph and Mary, they were given a king's gift of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I read some stuff about how much it was worth. I don't know if I believe them, so we'll just leave it at that. It was a whole lot of money, right? And so they lived on it for, in four, for four years, and they could have just gotten really comfortable and stayed right there. Yep. They, they could have allowed a destiny to die because they got comfortable in a place that was meant only to be safe and refuge rather than moving forward. So, but they didn't. Thank God. Praise God. It all, it all worked out. And so they came back. Um, I think God has probably sent some of you to different places of rest. And that's great, and we need those. But in those places of rest, keep listening for the voice of the Lord that you don't stay too long. Don't outstay your welcome. Don't allow a sabbatical, a Sabbath, a, a vacation, um, a break for COVID to turn into a slavery mindset rather than the rest that it was meant for. And so I, I want to just say this. I really think that some of you have actually been sent to South Point Church for a rest. I've heard that from lots of people. I got hurt at this church, or I was wounded, or this happened. I came here to South Point to heal and to rest. And I am so glad you're here, and you can do exactly that. You can sit in a seat and sit there until you are healed and rested and whole. One of, one of, our, one of our good friends, Brandon um, Spencer, he was actually the one playing, playing percussion tonight, today. Um, him and his wife came to us, and they, it was, this was years ago, but they came and they said that same thing. They just said, hey, you know, we, we've, been, we've been hurt, we've been hurting, we, we've been struggling, and we just need time to heal. And I said, that's great. Sit here as long as you need to, but do this. Do me a favor. He was like, what? I said, when you're healed, tell me, and so we can put you back advancing the kingdom of God, put you back in ministry. And he said, okay. It took a few years, it did, but I remember when him and his wife came to me and they said, we're healed and we're ready to go. So some of you have been at South Point for a while. I'm not even talking about the time frame. I'm just saying, don't stay too long in a place of refuge without advancing, okay? Step forward. And then let me give another challenge to one more group of people. Take this with all the love a pastor can muster <laughs> right here. Some of you took a year, year and a half off, two years off to be safe because of COVID, because of the pandemic. That's totally cool. That's awesome. We all need a place of rest and refuge. But don't stay too long that your refuge ends up making you a slave to a place that you never thought you would go. And don't let your destiny die because you're scared of a present thing. You have a destiny, and this church needs you yeah. to fulfill your destiny because this church's destiny is to change a city, and we need you to do that. Yeah. So I'm just laying out a big old challenge here. Again, love me with the love of a pastor, right? Because I love you, and I don't want you to stay in a place that you have so much to offer, so many gifts, so many talents. Some of you used to be on a volunteer team. Come on. Get back on there. Help us advance the kingdom of God. Some of you used to be solid givers and you just kind of stopped. Hey, you know what? It's time to step back into those things. Take the end of this year, December 26th, and let's just make some new commitments to say, you know what? This next year, I'm not just getting back in. I'm jumping back in with both feet. 
So all of us, let's just think about where we've stayed a little bit too long, whatever that is, and let's just make a commitment to step out of that and to start stepping into the destiny that God has already laid in front of us and we already know it's there. Can I pray for you right where you are? Will you just bow your head, close your eyes with me? Heavenly Father, I love you so much. I love you so much. I thank you for a fantastic year. I thank you for all that you've done in this church. I thank you for all that you've done in our homes, in our families, in our lives. And Lord, right now, you know those things that you've, that you've sent us. You've sent us to certain Egypts, and it's been for a good time and a good season. But now, Lord, show us those areas where the season has ended. Show us those areas where it's done and it's time to step back in with full vigor, with full passion, with all that's within us. So that not only are our lives advancing, but our lives are advancing and helping advance the kingdom of God. We love you, Father. We are so thankful for your word and all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Hey, I love you guys immensely. Thanks so much for watching this. And I look forward to seeing you next Sunday. It is going to be January 2nd. And I've already, you've already heard the announcement. We start our fast this Sunday this coming Sunday, so we're going to fast from the 2nd to the 8th, and, uh, and it's a part of the whole time. Yes, you can party and fast all at the same time. Let's set this year up together. It's going to be amazing. I will see you Sunday, but before I let you go, we got to do the benediction, right? Yeah. Let's do the benediction. Heavenly Father, right now, we just ask that the words of our mouth, the meditations in our heart, Lord, they'll be acceptable in your sight. You're our Lord, our strength, and our Redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hey, love y'all. See you next Sunday. Woohoo! Good job. Nice. Thanks. Thanks. Turn around. Hair. There's a hair over there. That was a really good. Oh, thanks, dude.